exciting stuff is yet to come. If you're watching this, you get $15 off your first month of the dog pack. Use code <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh, here we go. This is the dog in charge of all the dogs, and this is the dog that's in charge of me. And her name is Pib. She's so like gangly, like her limbs are so floppy. When she walks, it sounds like her, like she's wearing like flippers, like her feet slap the floor. She's a good girl. Yeah, she's pretty good. I thought her. Oh. Some treats, some treat tricks. Some treat tricks? She had mites. Yeah, what are they, sarcops? Yeah. Yeah. She had like mites all over her, she had like scabs everywhere. Cause you were living in a ditch. Yeah, we rescued her. For all you nerds that are about to go in the comments, and you picked her up from a breeder. I know. Animal abuse. Okay. And if you got a dog from a breeder, that's fine. I wanna- More power to you. Can I show the tricks? Yep. Okay. Come here. Sit. 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 Shake. Shake. <gasps> Good girl. We've had her for three days. Uh, two. Okay, two. Two okay, nights. And lay down. Lay down. One's new. Lay down. I tried to. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay, roll over. <laughs> Not yet. Oh. Yeah. Nico, do you want bombsicle, jungle juice, or cherry blackout? You're going to have the bombsicle because he does all the media and he needs his brain to be wired while he's staring at a screen. And this is like Adderall. You can buy for way cheaper than you buy it from the, the weird guy. Your yeah, your downstairs neighbor. <laughs> Just get respawn instead and use discount code dozer for 10% off. All right, so today is day five of our deload. So we're going like 80% for some singles, which is easy. I always tell athletes on their deload to make sure they kind of deload mentally too. When you go deload, staying like super focused and super dialed in with your training is not a great idea. Kind of give yourself or give your brain a rest too while your body's healing. And then Friday is the day I like to be like, all right, we're training again, turn it back on, take all my supplements, eat all my meals and do everything I would do when I'm training normally. I mean, I do that stuff anyways throughout the deload, but like I like to dial in and focus on it and make it a priority on Fridays. Oh yeah, the YouTube is fucking popping off. We got 3K subscribers in two videos, two weeks, or like a week and a half, which is fucking awesome. So whatever you guys are doing, continue to do it. These videos are fun to make and we've only done two and training's about to heat up a lot. We're deloading this week. The next four weeks are going to be more entertaining training wise than anything you've seen so far. So keep sharing these, keep subscribing, hit the like button, just do the normal YouTube stuff that everyone tells you to do because that actually helps a lot. So if you got tight adductors like me, watch out, Pib. You get one of these things and then you crank your shit open. Because for me, I can't even do a straddle stretch. Are you all right? I can't sit on the floor and lean forward because my shit's just too tight. So I buy this device on Amazon for $150. That was $150. <laughs> yeah. And soon I'm gonna be clapping my ankles behind my back and all you guys are gonna be worried about your tight deductors. So talk shit. Watch what happens. Dude, Madison can do this thing so wide. Stop biting. I'm just gonna grab your mouth. I just thought it would be something to kind of uh, alleviate my ADHD when I'm sitting around. Yeah, I'm training on the same bar as Kenny today and I've known him since like 2015. We were at an Olympic training center camp together like when I was like 17, 18 years old. So that'll be cool. And we got Taylor Wilkins who's going very, very heavy. And she's one of the best in the country right now. So more fun stuff. Let's get someone to take their heel, put it right on the fat part of the lat. Put some pressure down, and then you just rotate back and forth. You'll feel it open up. It's like glued down, and then all of a sudden it's gonna move a lot better. And you get a good, you get a good look at her butt. This is why she's not mic'd up.
Very nice. Let's go. So programming for women, essentially it's just overall workload, like the weights you lift, how many times you lift those weights. Women are lifting less weight than men. So women can handle more volume than men because just the wear and tear on their bones and their tendons is not gonna be as severe. If a girl's clean and jerking 100 kilos, that's gonna do a lot less to her body than a guy clean and jerking 200 kilos. No matter what the weight is, it's just less weight, it's less wear and tear on the body. Just because you're smaller doesn't mean your bones are more fragile. Doesn't mean your tendons are smaller, but they're not more fragile. Women can handle more volume simply because the weight is not as high as men. Right? And men are more pathetic than women when it comes to training. Men complain a lot more. Men question the programming a lot more. Men look for better options more. Women get their programming. And they put their heads down and they work. That's what I've seen as a coach. Look at today. I probably complained like four times and Madison and Taylor didn't. How was it coaching your girlfriend? Fucking terrible. <laughs> Don't recommend it. No, she's getting better. It's actually fun because it's fun to watch her go from just completely thinking I'm an idiot to me giving her some cues and then all of a sudden they start working and then she's like, okay, but she doesn't want to like express that it worked so she's just like I'm doing my thing and her thing is the things that I've told you to do <laughs> you get no credit but you see it work right right now I'm I don't even know what you're doing mentally unstable okay. to when I when I do weightlifting I don't know why um, I just right now I'm going through like I don't think I'm good enough and blah 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 poor me so my weightlifting has been severely affected by that of be, me being like, do I even want to continue doing this? Yes, you want to continue doing this. So, Nico, you're about to get Spider Man. Spider, it's okay. <laughs> He's just like I'm gonna kill it. Fear. Just don't move, dude. <laughs> I'm a human tripod right now. I'm not moving. Three, two, one. Oh, that was sick. Three, two, one. Start a fire. Right now, I'm just, I want to lift for me, and I haven't found that yet, so I'm just kind of waiting for that feeling to come of being like, I want to come into the gym, and I want to be the best version of me, because I want that. Like, I'm, right now, I'm lifting because I want to be Dylan's training partner. Aww. <laughs> I'm lifting for me. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I want to do nationals for Dylan, and I, like, feel like I'm rushing into it a little bit, and I'm not hitting the numbers that I would be happy hitting. Um, but I'm trying to turn my brain around and if it turns around in a month, I'll compete at nationals. If it doesn't, then I'm going to pull out because there's no point of me doing bad out of meat and being disappointed. Like it'll, it'll only be beneficial if I do well. And if I don't do well, it's going to be very detrimental and I'll probably want to quit. So I'm kind of like weighing on my options. She has this disease where she can't be proud of herself. Well, I mean, I think it was because I was there to make an international team and I missed it by one kilo. Imagine missing one lift by one kilo and not making an international team. But then you, like, win nationals, so you're like... <laughs> like, I don't know how to feel. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I have literally never done anything for my overhead, like, specifically. Like, I put weights overhead all the time, but never have I been like, I need to improve my overhead position. I just kind of put the bar up there, and then I think after 11 years of lifting weights, it just kind of ends up being good. So if you're consistent for that long, then there's a bug around me. Then you don't have to target things that much. That's why I tell people when you're going and you're trying to get better at weightlifting, just get better at weightlifting. Don't try to do all these little specific things and these shortcuts to try and expedite the process because you're just going to waste time. If you just get better at the movements, all those little things will fall into place eventually. That's a gymnast. Bro. Yeah, like, but I was also a very flexible gymnast, like naturally, like so. I was also stretched as a gymnast, so like, you know all the things that you're not supposed to do to like kids. I don't know if you guys know, but the science behind like gymnastics and like sh over stretching, like literally yanking on their limbs is like proven recently that it's just terrible for you. And while I was a gymnast, it was like, yeah, everything's great, everything's good. So I was just torn apart while I was a kid. <laughs> That's not 
<laughs> that's not good. That's, not that's good. what she said. All right, what's your favorite Big Friday memory? No. Oh. Um, clean and jerking 190 for the first time at Mash Elite. I was a 18 year old 94, and I was just having like the best two weeks of clean and jerking in my life. My PR at the time was 182, and I jumped straight from 180 to 190 and actually made it like pretty easily. And that was my PR for like, no, it was only my PR for a year. But it went up to 192, and it's still 192. So that was that lift was like way ahead of its time. I only snatched 130 that day. Oh, wow. So that was, like, a freak lift. I'll send you the video, and you can put it on Fuck here. Fuck yeah. But it was... I haven't had a lift that... You know when you make a w lift, and you're like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Like, I can't believe I did yeah. that. That's, like, by far the most yeah. I've ever felt that. It was a weird lift. Like, I dropped the bar, and I was just like... <laughs> oh, like, I didn't know what the fuck to do. Yeah. It was cool. But that one. What comes to mind is my first 85 snatch, because I was a 49 at the time, and the record was pretty similar to that. I think it was 84 at the time and I hit 85 in training. Obviously I wasn't exactly weighing 49, but I was also weightlifting and for not very long and it was a, a huge lift for me. I think that was my favorite one. And I smiled after. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. This was week three. Next week training actually picks up and we start going harder than we went the last four weeks. So the exciting stuff is yet to come. If you're watching this, you get $15 off your first month of the dog pack. Use code DOGTUBE. Use code DOGTUBE on dozerweightlifting.com. When you buy the dog pack, you'll get $15 off your first month. And do all the cool YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe. Share it with your friends. Teach your friends how to be a dog. And have a good day.